Well, good morning, everybody. This is Miss Avi from Hoodoo Delish, and I wanted to go ahead and do something that I probably should have made a video for you guys about earlier, but you know, it didn't. It didn't occur to me, and I apologize for that. And I'm going to move these candles out of the way here. But okay, so one of the most basic things when you're doing any working is going to be the petition paper, and this. The petition paper is a very basic step in hoodoo. It is the written prayer that you use, use writing magic and, and, and word magic to endow with your intent for the entire rest of the work. It's very simple to make, but it's one of those things that it's, it's considered kind of foundational to most of work that you would do. Now, let me be very clear. There are other ways to do a work. I actually do works without petition papers, but Petition paper is usually going to be the easiest way to go forward with this. So what I'm going to do is teach you how to make the main type of petition paper. There are actually two varieties. There's what you would call a drawing and a banishing. And the only real difference between them is number one, what you write on them and number two, which direction you make them in. And you'll see what I mean in just a second, but we're going to make a drawing, a drawing bringing to petition paper. Um, this is a, a paper that you are specifically going to use for something that you want to come into your life. More money, um, a lover that you want back, a job that you want, a house that you would like. Uh, do not try to use this type of paper for something you would want to send away from yourself. You are more likely to get more of that thing if you use this, this way of making a petition paper. So. The first rule of petition paper is traditionally, and there's lots of different traditions, there's lots of different backgrounds. Um, this, I'm going to do one thing that's non-traditional here in that I am using white, plain, uh, just regular old A4 printer paper. Um, traditionally, most hoodoo will tell you you should use brown paper, unprinted brown paper, but I also firmly believe that hoodoo is about what you have access to and what's reasonable for you. So I use this. I use the printer paper because that's something that I can actually obtain without having to go way out of my way and, and spend extra money and time. So the way that we're going to do this, because it is a drawing paper, we're going to start over here on the right side. and. With petition paper, you don't want there to be any cut edges, machine cut edges or, or device cut edges. So don't cut it with scissors either. It needs to be hand done. And because you're going to be bringing this towards yourself, you want to take the paper and tear it towards yourself. I like to tear it towards myself while saying the goal for the paper. So in this example, bring John Smith to Jim Doe. And just saying that, that affirmation or that prayer as you're doing it. And saying, bring John Smith to Jane Doe. And you notice which direction I'm turning it. I'm going like this, I'm doing a quarter turn clockwise. Clockwise is the direction in circles of bringing things towards you. And so we'll go it again. Bring John Smith to Jane Doe. And again, one more time. Bring John Smith to Jane Doe. Now, if you don't quite like the shape that you've got or you need a, a square or you, you just want to trim it up, it's perfectly acceptable to keep going. Bring John Smith to Jane Doe. Uh, for certain types of works, you might want to actually do a certain number of rips. Um, for money, I usually tend to start very thin and actually do eight all the way around. But I think this is, this is enough. This is a good enough shape. So that's step number one in making it. The next thing we're going to do here, I'm just going to make sure my pen is working. With petitions, there's several different ways to write them depending on what you want. Most work, you're going to want to write the person's name and birthday, and then we're going to do a, what's called the crossing method with your goal. So we're going to go John Smith. I say that he's born on January 1st of 1960, just for argument's sake. Okay, and you want that written like that. Now you're going to turn it this way, and you're going to write the goal across. And in this case, I'm just going to use lover return.
In general, you want to keep what you write simple, straight, to the point, um, and most of the time you're going to want to write it in the form of a command. So, Lover Return is grammatically a little weird, but I like it because it names the individual that is your target, John Smith in this case, as a lover and orders him to go back to his previous lover. And now, as we turn it again, clockwise, keep turning clockwise, we're gonna clarify who that previous lover is. We're gonna write across, directly on top of, where his name is, Jane Doe. And we're gonna say that she's born on January the 1st of, I don't know, 65. Now you're writing her name on top of his because it is specifically supposed to, to dominate or put her will on top of his. And it's double locking in. If you see that lover return, it's locking that in for the two of them. Now there's other ways to write this. Um, for example, one thing you might do would be write his name three times with his birth date, turn it one quarter turn, write her name across his three times, and then write in a circle lover return all the way around without lifting the pen. That would be, and I mean, of course you go and you know cross the T once you were done. You could do it that way. Um, if you are doing it for someone other than yourself, I would recommend that you turn it again and sign it. I was always taught that this is kind of like the magician is signing the spiritual check saying it's it's my energy that is doing this my will that is doing this um, and that's what I do with with my petitions that are not for myself I do sign them now if it is for yourself then you might want to put your signature as the dominating signature so that is one way to do a petition um, that's that's the main way I want to flip this over and you would not you would not do this with a petition in general just so you know, these are generally things that you would keep simple, but just to illustrate something else here, one more type of petition that I often use is something that is designed to bring two people together. And in this case, we're gonna use John Smith and Jane Doe, and this is when you want to bring about a meeting or a, a reconnection. It's another way to strengthen lover return work. So we're gonna write John Smith. And you always want to start with the target. It's, it's just a good, the, the target's name in general is going to be the very first layer of ink that you put down on the, the petition. John Smith and his birthday. Now, what we're actually going to do over here is write the other person's name backwards, go in this direction. So, this takes a little practice. So, and, and don't worry if your handwriting is not the best. The spirits are not going to judge you on your penmanship, trust me. It's hard for me to remember how to write a five backwards. If you ever think about that, that's not something that they encourage us to do. So, um, but ultimately it actually doesn't matter if you get everything perfect or not. It, it is about the fact that you are moving these two spirits in a direction with the words that you are writing. So the reason you would have these aimed towards each other and backwards is because this is going to, to pull that energy the right direction. And you've got two energies flowing like this. Oh. And some people say if you make a mistake on a petition, then redo it all. I don't really understand that concept because one of the whole principles of, of hoodoo was that that it is very difficult, you know, to, I'm, I'm just consistently making my fives the wrong way, but that's okay. One of the principles was that the, these were people who often lived in poverty and did not have lots of resources. And if they had written something wrong, they might not have more paper. So I just, I'm just not even about it. Now turning like this, what you're going to do is write that. Okay. 
that lover return right across. Like that. And that actually locks both in. And now you can turn it like this and write the name of the magician like that. So that is how you make a petition. And that's, that's a drawing petition. Again, it's to bring something in towards yourself. You can do it with money. You can do it with love. Just about anything that you would like to bring in. Um, most of the time, any petition, you want to phrase it again as a command or you want to put it in the positive. Do not try, and I see a lot of people do this mistake, do not try to draw in a negative. Do not try to say, um, bring me something other than. Or, or, you know, other examples of that would be, bring me a job that is not like. You, if you're trying to draw in a do job, you want to say the things that you want the job to be like. And I'll probably do another video on how to make a more complex petition. This is, this is a very, very basic, keep it short, keep it simple. Um, you can make more complicated things like this, but in general, it's going to be more important the prayer that you put into it and the intent and the visualization than the actual length and complexity of the words you choose. So that's a little bit of basics on petition magic. What you would do with this is take it, depending on what type of magic you're doing, you might anoint it with oil. I usually rub my hands with oil and then we'll actually take the petition paper and massage it and kind of like work that energy in there. That's what I like to do. Uh, other people believe in anointing the four corners. Some say the four corners in the middle. Uh, some people don't anoint it at all. It, it just, that there's lots of traditions on that. I don't think there's really any one right or wrong way. You just have to go with what you feel is gonna work for your specific situation. Um, and, and again, always remember that there's economy in this. Um, you can do a hoodoo work with no oils at all. It's, it's completely okay to not have the herbs, the oils, the right supplies. Hoodoo is all about substitutions and working with what you got. And the average kitchen, the average kitchen can supply you with everything you need to do love magic, money magic, job magic, home magic, health magic, any type of magic that you feel you need to do. A decently stocked home kitchen can provide you with all those ingredients. It is not about fancy stuff. So I hope that this is helpful. Please leave a comment below. Tell me what you think, what your tradition is, if you've got another way that you were shown of doing it. I would definitely love to hear thoughts and comments and send me any questions you got. I love you guys so much. Bye-bye.